I'm not sure I'm able to speak as fast as, uh, as it did, but uh, I'll try to move on. Uh, Kamhem is uh, from Sweden. We're the biggest operator, cable operator, and uh, we are um, currently promoting a TiVo solution. We have 40% of the digital TV or pay TV customers having a TiVo PVR solution. And uh, we've seen significant improvement in net promoter score and customer satisfaction after introducing the solution. However, the solution only reaches 40% of the pay TV customers and the remaining customers haven't seen any major improvements since HD, which was probably 10 years ago. So we launched a project um, and uh, I'll try to take you through some of the decisions we took. First of all, I think it's important that just to give you a short overview of the market, of some of the challenges that we're experiencing, the decision we took, and then the execution that we're currently facing. So, Comhem is uh, currently having two brands. Yes, last year we made an acquisition of Boxer, who is the terrestrial network in Sweden. And we are now promoting Comhem in cable and IP networks and Boxer in DTT and IP networks. Currently, we have just over 40% of the pay TV market in Sweden, and we have an idea of continuing growing that. Sweden consists of 4 million households or a bit more. Most of that are divided into uh, MDUs and SDUs, which is fairly close. We are with the cable network present in most of the MDUs, and we also have, with the terrestrial network, full coverage throughout Sweden. The, competitive, uh, the market is, though, fairly competitive. Um, we are seeing growth in, in both broadcast pay TV, as we, as we know it, and OTT, which is in any market, I think, but pay TV is still growing within the operators as well. Within the cable networks, we are seeing that 40% of the network is being over or is already overbuilt by fiber, and which is increasing strongly over the years. And the fiber network is an open network, which means that most of the customers on the, on the network will have up till four, five, six service providers to choose within the TV selection. So highly competitive and as We've always seen in the Nordic region also very open to try new things, which also has been shown during the day that there's a high penetration of OTT services. We see that 37% of the households have OTT services, and the OTT households usually have 1.6 OTT services per household. The high competition has led to a high change or a big change within not only Kamhem, I think most of the operators in Sweden, that you're no longer allowed to have dissatisfaction customers. We are in a position where customers can easily pick and choose any operator, and we need to get up to speed. So the challenges we're facing is, <laughs> is, is, uh, is, is uh, four major challenges we see, and one of them that we decided to try to uh, solve was to increase the NPS for the TV customers. As I mentioned, we've seen that the TiVo customers have a significantly higher NPS than the other customers, and we need to improve the NPS for the customers without the TiVo boxes. So the changes are needed to come. Uh, we still have a reputation within Sweden as a dusty old TV incumbent. Even though we've tried to improve the customer experience and have come a long way, we are still by some people considered as one of the old players. The new services and the new things that we're launching is, is moving in the right direction. We have a big uh, consolidation within the market. The Comhem and Boxer are currently merging everything together. So we'll have two separate brands, two separate commercial approaches, and we need to fit that into one ecosystem in order to make sure we get the best scale and the full economic scale of that. 
We've also seen that customers with a modern TV experience are more happy. So we do have the full catch-up. We do have SVOD. We do have TVOD integrations. And we do see a significantly higher NPS than the customers without in PVR solutions or the modern TV experiences. Finally, we've also seen a change in behavior. Broadcast or infrastructure is no longer the only source for video. Video is available. We've all also seen previously today that there is a lot of high-speed broadband. The most common speed sold in, in, in the Comhem infrastructure is 100 megabit and we see high penetrations in, in speeds above that. So speed is not an issue, capacity is not an issue. Everyone can buy IPTV services, OTT services, if they want to. So the decision we needed to make was to look into the possibilities and then decide on the solution going forward. We've been through most of the descriptions, but the turnkey solution, which is probably what most operators would have chosen five, 10 years ago, would have been the solution that nobody got fired for selecting five years ago. Uh, it's well-known players in the industry. There's a high level of stability. We know that there are lots of resources available within these companies to do the development. We've also learned that it's often influenced by the bigger players in the industry and we need to follow a very given roadmap in order to ensure that we can have the changes delivered. Within the RDK, we've been through that in the last sessions. It's, it's highly community driven, but I think there was a question on that earlier today and what we also experienced that it's mostly within the bigger operators and we've seen some challenges in that as well. Uh, especially on the requirements that will be on, on the internal resources in to make sure that we have the right architectural solution and design going forward. However, it will provide you with the flexibility not only on the hardware but also on the software given this very open source approach. The Android solution, the UI fits the high expectations that we've seen. We've seen that third party apps are available that's not necessarily a good thing. There are people in the commercial teams who are a bit worried about the full open platform and the capabilities of everybody being available within the set box that we are promoting and that we're pushing. But I think it's a good thing that we need to keep up with competition. We need to be fully aware of what is available in the industry and we need to be the best in breed. We need to be best in class in order to secure that. Yes, the priorities that we took the decision for was focused on three things. Launch, time to market. We've seen that things are changing rapidly in Sweden today. So there was a need for getting available and getting this product launched fairly soon. We've seen a set of features that were required in, in an industry today. So we'll be launching with what we call a minimum viable product but we'll continuously add services and we'll do continuous delivery going forward. And I'm not sure if we'll do updates every two weeks like we do in the multi-screen environment, but we certainly would like to have the opportunity of doing updates every day if needed. We also looked at the costs. We, we need to make sure that the total cost of ownership is the right mix in order to take the decision. And it's not only on the hardware cost, but also the software cost, licensing costs, and the development costs uh, for improving the solution going forward. So the conclusion was Android. We selected Android uh, this year. And uh, there are a few reasons for that. I think the most important one was the flexibility. It's very flexible. We'll we believe that there will be a continued relevance in the market for, for using an Android environment with the ecosystem being very uh, spread out through different solutions. There is a possibility of enabling additional content. What we've seen so far is that cable operators has been focusing on delivering content from the broadcasters only. We see that being a true aggregator in the Swedish market, we need to include other distributions and we need to include 
other ways of watching content. And there are so many different types of content that people are watching. I, I can tell you that my kids, they never watch any linear TV. They watch all of the apps that are not necessarily available within a normal environment, but we need to do that as part of the solution, so we want to include everything within that. We also believe that things need to be standards-based. It's fairly standard. Um, fast time to market is a priority. It's fairly easy to go pick and choose the components in the market, to, compo to pick the components in the industry, and to get the resources needed to launch a project at a short time scale, and then to continue delivering new updates afterwards. Even though there is a concern about the Google influence on pay TV, I think we've continuously heard Google saying we want to work with the operators, but there are still a concern saying, well, what ends up when they have the dominance in the world? And then finally, but not least, I think what we see is that we, we need to make things very multi-screen enabled. So from our point of view, the set-top box is just another device within the multi-screen solution that we have today. We're supporting various devices in-house, out-of-house, or out-of-home, and, and they are being merged into one solution, being consistent over the different platforms and using the benefits of each of the devices. And we see the set-top box as just another device within that portfolio that we need to support. And with the solution that we're choosing, we do believe that we'll get the benefits of doing that fairly simple. So the execution is currently ongoing. We are launching the set-top box, which will be fairly small, 15 centimeters times 15. And it will be a remote control without numeric buttons, which has been probably the biggest decision we we had to take, or the one causing most uh, disturbance within the company was actually to include the numeric buttons. We, we're changing the entire organization from working in a solution where you do upgrades maybe once a year, maybe once every two years, to doing updates every two weeks. And the one thing we get to discuss internally is if we need to have numeric buttons in the remote control, <laughs> which is kind of funny. But it's an Android set-top box. It will be using GMS. It will be using DVB-C, DVB-T. It will have multicast IP, and it will have various flavors of unicast uh, IP for the OTT services. It will have Ultra HD. We will probably introduce a PVR for Boxer, being a mid-tier and, and a broad uh, available solution in the market and will maintain TiVo as the premium selection within Comhem. We will allow third-party app integrations, and that will be an important part of the ecosystem that we try to encourage the right content to be available within the ecosystem to ensure that we continuously can be seen as the aggregator within the market. So what we did was we did the RFP process. We did it in January. We had the board approval in February. and. We are currently having full speed on the integration, which was done in, in we, we initiated late February, early March. And we are having an aim of launching in Q4 with what we call the minimum viable product, which is good. It will be similar to what we see within most of the deployments we, we see in, the Europe, in Europe today. It will have focus on continuous delivery, and it will have focus on delivering the, the, the streaming telemetry that we need in order to constantly improve the platform, not only from an operational perspective, but also from a commercial perspective. And we will have the commercial push being very aggressive in the market from the beginning of 2018. That's it.